My talk primarily talked about uh, the second line therapy for Hodgkin lymphoma. Um, in general, a patient who has relapse or refractory disease following frontline therapy, we, we do have a very good chance of still uh, allow, uh, bringing that patient to a cure. Um, and the uh, general approach to treatment is to give some kind of second line therapy and followed by consolidation with an autologous stem cell transplant. Uh, and based upon data that's fairly old at this point from studies uh, from the 1990s and then 2002, uh, the uh, use of an autologous cell transplant is considered standard of care as it was associated with improvement in progression-free survival. Um, and so that's, that's what we're using in our current practice. Um, with regard to what to use to get the patients to a transplant with regard to the second line therapy, there's, there's no one standard and there's a lot of different options. Um, and there's traditional chemotherapy options, which um, that we've been using for many years, such as ICE or DHAP or gemcitabine based therapy. And then there's newer options um, that have incorporated some of the newer drugs that are used in Hodgkin lymphoma. And that includes regimens that include brintuximab, either given sequentially with chemotherapy or combined with chemotherapy therapy, as well as now uh, the use of checkpoint inhibitors in this setting. Um, and so one of the studies that I highlighted in the talk uh, was a study evaluating brentuximab plus nivolumab, which uh, when given in the second line setting was associated with a complete response rate of 67%. And uh, with patient, patients who went on to transplant um, directly after brentuximab plus nivolumab, had a one year or actually a two year progression free survival of about 91%. So the, the response with this regimen looks quite durable. Uh, in addition, even for patients who received an additional salvage before going on to transplant after brintuximab and nivolumab, uh, the, the progression free survival in that study was about was 79% to two years. So uh, the data looks quite favorable with that regimen. And the nice thing about that regimen is that it's given in the outpatient setting and it's, and it's well tolerated, uh, particularly in comparison to some of our traditional combination chemotherapy regimens. What I also highlighted was a, a new regimen that we've been studying at Sloan Kettering, which is a combination of pemerlizumab in combination with gemcitabine, vinaralbine, and doxal. Um, and so this was a study that we also evaluated as second-line therapy. And the reason for evaluating this combination was to uh, develop a regimen that is also administered in the outpatient setting that is hopefully well tolerated, um, but also because of the fact that more and more patients are getting brintuximab as part of their frontline treatment, there's the need for second-line regimens that don't include brintuximab um, since um, we often don't want to repeat that drug if, if the patients just relapse following regimen that included it. That was part of the rationale for choosing the drugs in this regimen. And at this point, uh, the the uh, the, the the study has been completed. There were 39 patients that were enrolled in the study, and we've been very encouraged by the results. The, the complete response rate to this combination was actually as high as 95%, um, and virtually every patient has gone on to transplant, um, aside for two patients who ended up refusing transplant. Um, and at this point, with limited follow-up, uh, we haven't had any patients have developed relapsed disease. Um, so we're very excited about um, the potential for this regimen. It certainly um, was uh, a bit higher in efficacy than we were expecting. Um, and I think that there's the potential for this to be a, a, a regimen that we commonly use in the second line setting. I did talk about um, as far as after transplant, um, some of the, what do we do for a patient who has relapse or refractory disease after transplant? Um, and, you know, traditionally in the past, the, the options were quite limited, um, but now um, we do have the options of potentially repeating treatment with brentuximab for a patient who has who who either responded well to in the past or potentially enrolling on a clinical trial with with novel combinations either with brentuximab or with PD one blockade. Um, and one um, interesting combination that um, is being evaluated in the setting of clinical trials is, is the combination of PD-1 blockade with epigenetic modification, which looks like a, potentially a promising uh, combination that uh, I'm excited to see more data about.